energy is definitely a topic of high interest. It is discussed around you know, the kitchen tables all the way to the international and global forums. At least you know, 50% of primary energy is, that is used in transportation, industry and by private consumers ends up today as waste heat. Our first speaker today is Joachim Karthauser, CEO at Selk Energy. He will talk about waste to hydrogen, the role of heat power in the future energy system. During his talk, don't forget now, you know, post your questions and comments. And now, very, very welcome to Science and Innovation Day, Joachim. Thank you very much for the invitation to speak today at this conference. I feel very honored to uh, take up a few topics, um, energy, startup companies in, in the field. Uh, my main message is that the energy transition is very urgent, but also can also be profitable. Um, I will kick off by uh, reminding you of the fact that the world is still running on uh, fossil. You see data from the um, from a reputable source. It's the BP annual yearbook, and you can see that um, energy consumption is increasing, and that the uh, majority of all energy sources is still fossil. Uh, you see that renewables, uh, mainly solar and, and and hydroelectricity, is 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 a few pieces on top of this uh, chain. We should realize that we are uh, consuming. Uh, more than, uh, let's say, an oil equivalent. Uh, imagine a cube of um, 300 meter uh, width. This is what we're taking daily out of Earth and, and uh, co combusted. Uh, I will talk about kilowatt hours. On average, every person is using something like 40 kilowatt hours, and I'll come, come back to the definition of a kilowatt hour. We should realize that we um, that we will have peak oil at some stage. Uh, the, the Earth has not indefinite sources, uh, so we will have to develop new technologies in any case. So we, we might, might as well start with that today. Um, imagine uh, on this picture, uh, what is visualized is the amount of carbon dioxide which we're emitting every day. It, it, is, it can be represented by a mountain over the city. You see that, uh, probably see that this is New York. We're emitting 40 billion tons uh, of, of CO2 every year and you can see from this picture that it's very difficult to dig that down um, into the earth. Uh, I would believe if CO2 was blue um, probably everybody would, convince, would be convinced that we do have a problem. Unfortunately it's visible but it's not visible for infrared light. Uh, infrared light is actually warming up the earth and more CO2 definitely means global warming. This is what we are realizing. Unfortunately not everybody and not every politician is really aware of this. I come back to the definition of one kilowatt hour. Excuse me for a little bit of physics uh, lecture here, but one kilowatt hour is an, an energy unit. It represents the energy which is stored in a car, which is lifted up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Now, I can't tell you why you would park your car on the Eiffel Tower. Don't do that, but th that is the uh, energy amount. Also, the last stone on the Cheops pyramid, this is also one kilowatt hour and you can imagine which manual labor that would be. Now the point is this is this costs you only 0.3 euro in the form of electricity that's uh, German electricity prices here in Sweden it's even cheaper and there's a huge discrepancy between the value we create from from energy and the low prices we actually uh, pay for energy yet without energy our societies simply don't work. Uh, but we should be a little bit more humble about the, the value of, um, of, of, of energy. So therefore, the whole point of this physics calculation is when you hear comments like, well, energy and electricity prices, they're, they're way too high, we cannot afford it. Let's please calm down the discussion, let's be a little bit more rational, uh, let's reflect upon that, that a car costs you much, much more in terms of depreciation, insurance, taxes, uh, what, what have you. Fuel cost is only a minor part of, of your car cost, uh, but you, you realize it when you, when you, when you pay the check at the, at the gas station. So if you have any good solution, like uh, make these costs invisible by a flat rate or including inclusion in the tax bill, please let me know. The discussion 
discussion is is very psychological and we have to uh, we have to improve upon that now i'm moving to heat power companies and the examples of Climon and Zel Zelk, in which I'm involved uh, as a founder. Now, heat power companies, uh, I'd, I'd coin heat, uh, heat power companies as companies who are using a rather unconventional way of producing electricity. All power plants or normal power plants use water and steam as a medium. This is evaporated by uh, high temperatures, it's turned into vapor, this drives a turbine and a generator and the vapor is, is uh, condensed and then pumped back uh, into, the, into the loop. Now if you have temperatures below 200 degree Celsius say, then other medium media like alcohol or, or other liquids are very suitable and that is called an organic Rankine cycle. But because it's a difficult term, we coined it heat power to compare it with solar power and um, wind power as the technologies which are considered renewable energies. Now, there are examples of companies in the field, Turboden from Italy, Ormet from the U USA. They are the big companies, but there are a number of uh, smaller companies, a range of smaller companies, Agenity, Climon, Opcon in Sweden, Orkan in Germany. They sell these, these technologies and they are applied in uh, combined heat and power plants in the geothermal field, in, in, in industry where you have waste heat between 100 and 200 degrees C, uh, and in, in the geothermal field. Now, of course, as a founder and long-term CTO of the company Climon, I'm particularly fond of Climon, so this is the uh, advertisement section. We started in 2010 with great support from the Swedish Energy Agency, uh, KTH in Stockholm and a range of other universities, in fact. And not to forget uh, a whole lot of support from uh, at, at a stage 300 private investors and since the um, stock market introduction some 15,000 owners I believe. What Climon did is um, to build a modular power plant generating 150 kilowatt uh, at a record high efficiency. The system is mass producible. Uh, we had an early success with uh, the marine field, um, managed to get listed on the Nasdaq stock market uh, and uh, some key owners started a financing company which actually runs geothermal and and other projects we also got the prestigious breakthrough energy venture uh, um, foundation headed by Bill Gates and and other people into the into the into into baseload so we got another financing source uh, to realize projects on Iceland in Japan uh, soon hopefully in Taiwan and now the focus is on marine and genset uh, so marine engines at land generating uh, electricity so one the uh, the first success was a, a heat recovery unit on the uh, Viking Grace, a fantastic natural gas driven ship. It could be driven by by biogas. Uh, in fact, it's one of the, it's I think the the most modern ferry. It has a sister ship now equipped with with four units. Uh, we're also at uh, our climb one is represented at Virgin Voyages, um, a container ship by Maersk, and a range of geothermal and uh, genset projects. So it's um, expanding and hopefully expanding again after the, the pandemic. Uh, why all this talk about heat power or what is heat power? I will show you a very complicated slide, but I start with the with a, with a simpler one. On the left hand side, you see fossil energy as the main uh, energy carrier today and a little bit of renewables uh, on top of that. Uh, all this energy is used in industry, transport, heating, residential, but in fact only about 46% is really used. All the rest is leaving uh, um, us as rejected energy and there's mainly heat from transport and power plants. Now on a more complicated uh, slide, uh, but you can see that there is good scientific documentation. You see that in great detail how oil, gas, uh, coal, renewables, how they're used in power generation, transport, generating services. But again, 45, 54% um, is re rejected. And that could be used in thermal storage, it could be used again, it could be used intelligently for, for power generation and, and heat services. That's the whole point of, um, of heat power. You see the, the huge potential here. 
The big issues we are facing is waste. It's not only heat, uh, but it's also plastic, biomaterial, textile. We'll hear a section about textile later. Uh, we have a huge biomass problem, basically. Uh, biogas will uh, disappear as a fuel. We should do something about uh, this biogas. It's huge volumes. Uh, agriculture and industry, they have a huge task in becoming more efficient and sustainable. Transport definitely needs to be electric. That can be batteries and, and, and hydrogen. And a very huge topic, uh, we will have a expansion of solar and wind, but these are intermittent energy sources. We need to store them, we need to develop very large storage devices for that. How is that possible? Well, financing. The money is there. The legislation, after 30 years of waiting, the legislation is finally coming in form of EU tax taxonomy and the United Nations principles of responsible investments. That is already diverting money and investment money to green projects. Uh, maybe too late. Science tells us, science including Professor Johan Röckström tells us uh, simplified, we have to decarbonize 50% every decade from, from now. We should have started in 2020. Instead, energy consumption goes up. Uh, that is the, 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 the carbon road, roadmap, halving emissions every day, uh, every decade. Uh, that would lead to zero emissions by 2050. And that gives us a 75% chance to be uh, under two degrees warming um, according to the Paris Agreement. Are we on track? Unfortunately, no. If you look at what we should have done, we've maybe done one third in terms of investments. So we need to speed up enormously uh, in the future. Is that realistic? Well, we need to do huge investments. Uh, you see this on the graph as the yellow bars, uh, the negative bars. That will create savings in terms of lower imports of fossil energy. But we need to do this in a, in a smooth manner. It has to be fair, it has to be socially acceptable and that internationally we, we have to uh, accept that m many countries will increase their energy consumption. So we have to decrease it uh, even more in order to meet this. Uh, and it also has to be profitable. The, the capitalist system is simply better in, in, in accomplishing change. Uh, so it has to be both smooth and profitable, otherwise it simply will not happen. Can it work uh, mathematically? Uh, the German Fraunhofer Institute did a uh, roadmap and said um, it's the same graphic you see on the on the lower scale, uh, a whole range of investments in wind, solar storage, electromobility, you name it, house insulation. Uh, this is huge investments, but they will be compensated by savings in imports of um, mainly fossil energy. So in the end, the savings by, by 2050 or something, the savings will be bigger than the, than the costs for the investments. But the investments are in huge indeed. We talk about 400 billion euro needed only in Germany. That's a huge number, uh, incomprehensible. But if you divide 400 billion euro by 80 million inhabitants, you arrive at a figure of something like 5,000 euro per person. And I think this is definitely, you, you, can, you can get this money from the bank, especially if you buy good assets like we mentioned wind, solar, uh, all the other hardware. Uh, which is generate, generating all these uh, services. I'm not saying it's easy, uh, but it's doable and you see it's also profitable. I'm coming to Selk. Uh, half a year ago, um, I and a few colleagues started Selk uh, and it's, it's about providing the infrastructure for, for hydrogen. Uh, we analyzed a few cases and found there is we have lots of opportunities to convert uh, waste heat first into electricity and then to hydrogen mainly for heavy transports, trucks, buses, trains. Uh, the industry waste heat is available. It can be, it can be converted locally. In addition, CO2 from this local industry can be sent to greenhouses and, and uh, I could talk hours about greenhouses. I find that this is the next uh, uh, big investment wave we will see in Sweden. Uh, we're not self-sustainable in terms of food. Uh, we transport that from far away. Uh, this is really a good in, in, uh, advantage. In the cases where we work, and I can't give you too many details, but we can realize a lower, lower carbon footprint for the industry from which we source the waste heat. This is good. There will 
will be happy in terms of EU taxonomy because they will pay lower taxes. But we also create a more resilient, local, uh, sort of distributed uh, uh, energy system which simply is more resilient and more profitable. And we also provide the opportunity for transport to convert to non-fossil. Um, first examples exist of this um, uh, sector coupling and using electricity, heat and energy storage uh, in, in the form of sectorial coupling. Uh, this is a picture of a Bavarian city with a two square kilo kilometer uh, greenhouse. Um, CO2 is, industrial CO2 is being used and absorbed in, in, in the greenhouse. So, so it's all wonderful. One could add a, a hot uh, a, a huge underground storage of hot water that would allow even an, an, a sort of electrical battery to be realized. We have a second example in Zelk or, or project we're working on and this concerns very large sites where uh, huge amounts of hydrogen are produced for various purposes. That is generating also some, some waste heat and uh, allows uh, the warming of very, very large uh, greenhouses. And there is a case for it. We're, again, we're not producing enough uh, food and greenhouses are a fantastic instrument to produce ecological food in a, in a very sustainable manner. They also absorb huge amounts of uh, CO2. And that is important because if we create uh, hydrogen from biomass and, and, and biogas, uh, we will co-generate CO2. And the best way to, to use CO2 is indeed by photosynthesis. Let nature do the work of lifting up CO2 into, into energy carriers and also food. Uh, greenhouses also create massive employment opportunities which we which we need and in terms of pandemic when transport chains are interrupted it it gives national security so it's a win 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 for for all parties uh, concerned uh, i could go th in great detail through such a complex energy system but um, i think the uh, the, the, the main message here is uh, hydrogen can contribute to strengthening, to, to make energy systems much more resilient. Uh, hydrogen is one way of storing energy. It can be used in fuel cells for emergency power, for charging uh, electrical cars. Uh, and in addition, if we make uh, hydrogen from, from CO2, it also allows uh, a circular economy between greenhouses, between the bioeconomy and the, and the electricity and energy. Uh, community. Um, this is more a summary picture of the uh, typical cases we, we do. So a, a, a medium scale sort of one to four, five megawatt hydrogen equivalent in, in um, medium sized cities and then the second project in very large uh, hydrogen generation projects. And it's important here to point out that this is done in PPP, which means uh, private public partnership. Uh, you don't realize this type of projects without political support, without regional support. And I can say we have found fantastic uh, local and regional politicians who support this um, development. Um, Summarizing, that's the end of the ad, uh, advertisement section, but we, it, to accomplish the energy transition, we really need to deploy existing technologies. We don't have to invent new wheels, but basically all the instruments and components we need to deploy are invented and available. What is needed is uh, financing and smart politicians. Of course, as a private person, you can do a lot yourself, uh, use an electric car, uh, electrical bicycle, insulate your house, buy solar cells, buy green uh, electricity, fly less um, and so forth and tell your politicians that you want a change. Now I have a few minutes left and I was asked to, to comment on how is it to, to, to start a company, um, how does that work and I can say I've been lucky uh, starting a number of companies which um, uh, uh, developed uh, nicely. I don't have the master recipe, but I would like I would like to describe the the ecosystem of companies. Now, first facts: big company don't expect change from big companies. Big companies are very good at what they're doing, but it's not their mission to be creative and and innovative. They usually get their innovations from uh, smaller companies. Entrepreneurs have 
fantastic, have a whole lot of ideas, but they don't have the money. Uh, and also you have, as an entrepreneur, you're usually very optimistic, but the truth is that progress and market penetration takes many times, uh, is many times slower than you believe, even if in your pe pessimistic scenarios. So what's the conclusion from that? Um, eat your favorite idea for breakfast, be harsh against yourself, uh, ask colleagues to, to, to kill your, kill your favorites, kill your darlings. When you develop the company, be lean and mean and, and use the ecosystem. I have a little bottle here. Uh, you wonder, you may wonder what that is. When we developed Climon, we had first a slightly different power process. We measured how fast um, uh, alkaline materials absorb CO2 and we used plastic bottles and we, by, by shaking, we, we measured how fast the, the plastic bottle would collapse. That's a very, that's lean and mean. This is, um, we, we didn't have the money for equipment, but we managed to, to find the ideal chemicals for, for, for our purposes. So save money, be very careful. Uh, careful with your money but do work with angels in the ecosystem you're not alone you have a lot of friends you have a lot of cooperation uh, opportunities uh, in the field do use that do use angels which want to engage in your business and help you with contacts to legal um, uh, uh, finance um, uh, other other experts which you need you can't do it alone uh, nowadays, I'm um, mentoring a few companies or analyze uh, analyze business opportunities, and I think what 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 I'm looking at uh, if I meet entrepreneurs who have an idea. Um, the first thing I look at is, is, is the idea really a minor improvement or is it really something disruptive and, and enabling? That's, uh, that's a key uh, thing. Uh, secondly, is there any market demand? Is there any potential customer identified? Uh, many people forget it. Many people are in love with their technology. That's not good enough. You need a customer who really is screaming for, for, for something. Very important, or maybe most important, are psychological aspects. Is it really people who have the drive and passion to, to, to do it? And do they show respect for their co-workers? You cannot develop a company uh, without a, a, a team. Uh, you need to have different talents. You need to engage uh, legal, financial advisors. Um, most often you're a technician, you need uh, business people who tell you, well, the business model is completely wrong, try something different, uh, except, except people who say no, accept or welcome devil's advocates, uh, so to speak. Um, of course, the timing has to be right. Uh, I think the, the timing for Climb On was very right. The, the timing for Zelk is also right. Hydrogen was invented 100 years ago or more, but the time for hydrogen is now. And of course, you need some luck, but then it's like Ingmar Steinmark said, um, the more you train, the more luck you have. Now, you may consider this all no-brainers uh, and simple things, but try to get all this seven out of seven right. This is very, very difficult. Um, I hope this helps you in developing your, your company. Uh, finally, it's, uh, we only had a few minutes to, to describe the energy system. If you love equations and numbers, uh, mail me. Uh, you can have a 100-page book, which I wrote with my friend and co-founder, Thomas Oestrom from, from Climon. It's a lot of cases on the energy transition, and I'm still optimistic that we can uh, do it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. I'm sure we hear all this applause out there somewhere. <laughs> I would uh, love to have an audience here. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, well, thank you for both, you know, very concrete examples, uh, but also taking us in the, in the wider and bigger, bigger picture here. I mean, the transport system is one of the big challenges of today where we have to see a big change. Mm -hmm. um, do you see hydrogen as the future source of electricity for the transportation sector if you compare it to the batteries that we are using today? I think actually cars will be run on batteries and trucks and trains and buses will run on, on hydrogen. The, the, the weight of batteries for trucks would, would be too high. You have no space for, for loads. Uh, batteries are fantastic for, for, for cars. So uh, I think it's, it's two ways and they, they complement each other. I, is there a difference in, you know, if you look at the sort of life cycle, uh, compare batteries to using hydrogen? Um, 
As if you take the fantastic company Northvolt, they will make sure that the metals which we which we use for battles uh, for, for 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 batteries that they are traceable. I think they're doing a fantastic job in in making sure that this is done in a sustainable manner. I'm very pleased that this is in Sweden. I think we should have mines in Sweden. We have much more control uh, uh, over, over doing that in a in a responsible manner. So I think you can you can do it. Uh, you can ask the same question about hydrogen. Uh, how do we uh, source hydrogen? I don't believe we will ever make it from, from nuclear. Nuclear won't happen. It takes far too long time to, to deploy it. As a physicist, I love, I love nuclear, but it's, it's simply too expensive. It won't happen. So also in hydrogen, we have to make sure that this is done in a, in a responsible manner. Uh, so the, the issue is the same. Okay, and now it, it's opinion. Now you have a chance to give your opinion. Uh, how does Sweden compare to other countries with regards to hydrogen production and hydrogen fuel cell technology? Um, I think personally, um, you know, I live here for 25 years. Of course, I'm in love with this country, <laughs> uh, but I've, I find Sweden is a little bit a laggard in, in hydrogen. There's much more happening in Japan, Germany, and now in the US. So Sweden has to catch up. And I believe you have some catching up to do. <laughs> yeah. I accept. I, I would love to have a discussion yeah. uh, about this, but I think it is wise to. It is. It would be wise from by the Swedish government to support that much more. I believe we we by investing now we create business opportunities in in the future. That's that's the whole point of my mm. uh, of my discussion. So yeah. Sweden should do much more. Mm. Inger, please join us. Uh, do we have some questions from, from the audience? Yes, yeah, we have. Uh, one question is, what hinders your technology for waste heat conversion to be installed large scale? What are the main barriers for implementation? Uh, um, I think times are, 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 are changing now. Now uh, you can see in the financial world that, that uh, huge funds are redirected to um, to renewable energies and also to heat power and, and, and hydrogen in particular. So I, I, I don't think there's a, there, there's not, not an, it's not the problem to find investors. Uh, it, executing these investments takes a lot of time and, and, and energy. So um, I think finally we, we woke up. Um, I think for 30 years the climate problem was neglected. Mm. Uh, and and all countries have a sort of legitimate interest to favor their their own industries. Uh, I think the climate the, 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 the climate issue was simply not taken serious by, mm. by politicians, okay. but it is taken being taken serious by insurances and and and, and the finance world. So mm -hmm. finally, things are happening. And look at the EU, which is now pumping in billions of euros into into the hydrogen economy in particular. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question is, the fa facilities you show take up a lot of space. How do you think about the loss of active farmland? Mm -hmm. Is there any way to justify it? But I think on the contrary, if we, if we develop greenhouses at, on, on a large scale, mm -hmm. uh, you can produce more food on, on, on smaller areas. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the opposite is true. Uh, we talked about storage, uh, for instance. Wind and solar have to be stored. Uh, this this won't be happening. We don't have enough metals to build batteries. So energy will be stored in, in, in other devices, including large underground reservoirs where we will uh, store the heat. This is not visible from the top. You can build this under, under Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. the, company Skanska has developed a thermal energy storage which you could put right under Gothenburg Central Station. You wouldn't see it. We have time for one more question. Mm -hmm. Do we okay. have anything else from the audience? Yes. yes. Why is this development going so slow? V good question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame us. <laughs> um, I think it's like psychology. I, uh, I I believe people have not taken climate change f um, serious, or they were afraid that their lifestyle would have to change. Um, I think it really had to be pressing now with uh, floodings in in uh, in uh, all sorts of countries. Uh, now we realize that climate change is real. It took 
unfortunately some six Nobel Prizes for all sorts of scientists until we realized this is climate change is really happening. Mm. The North Pole, the Antarctica mm. are, are melting. Mm. We do have a problem, but, but I think it simply took took that. And then a, a, a natural conservatism in the industry, wishful thinking that this cannot be true. Um, uh, I believe we, we can, we, we don't have to sacrifice our lifestyle. That is the, 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 the positive um, uh, message here. Mm. I mean, it's much more fun to drive an electric mm. car than a, than a, than a fossil car. Mm. Uh, so, and I think it's much more fun to have a properly insulated house where you, where you don't have to buy. You can have a, a zero mm. uh, energy house. It's mm. much more comfortable mm. uh, than, 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 than a house with a huge oil tank. Mm. Uh, so um, mm. the, the energy transition can be fun. Mm. It can be smooth and profitable. Thank you all of you for your questions and thank you Joachim Karthauser for sharing this with us and let's keep the conversation going, right? Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much.